Stepping into the world of Doom mods is like falling down the proverbial rabbit hole, emerging in this bizarre fantasy world where people seem to speak another language and the world around you seems to have completely lost its mind. Throughout the years we've had more Doom mods than you can poke a stick at, but it always comes back to Sergeant Mark's Brutal Doom at one point or another, and he's just recently released a public beta for version 21. <laughs> If you've played any of the previous versions, then you pretty much know what to expect, and all that's really happened with V21 is more of an incremental update, tweaking a few things here and there and adding in some new weapons more than doing anything that's all that groundbreaking. Now, it would be kinda hard to list all of the things that this new version has changed or implemented, and also kinda boring, but there are changes that are definitely more noticeable than others, from the improved gore system, the particle and lighting effects, but also most importantly is a lot of the new weapons that have also been added in. First off there's the axe, which is wielded by the zombie scientists and now serves as an alternate melee weapon with a basic or a powered up attack. Like melee combat in general, in pretty much all of the Brutal Doom versions, it's pretty much suicide to use this thing simply because most enemies dish out huge amounts of damage super quickly. One big change is that the pistol now has its own ammo type which is separate from the minigun, and sharing a slot with the pistol is the new submachine gun, which looks and sounds pretty damn awesome. My only problem with the submachine gun is that I rarely came across one. I mean, I didn't find one in the entirety of Doom 2, and I only found one in Doom 1 at the end of Episode 1 on Map 8. I assume this thing is replacing pistol pickups randomly, so I think they might need to increase the chances of this thing appearing. Because right now it's as rare as girls who swipe right on a brony's Tinder profile. As you'd expect, the shotgun and the super shotgun make a return, and the super shotgun also seems to have been modified a little bit from the last version. Whereas in the previous version, the damage seemed to drop off really quickly when you got a few feet away from enemies, it now seems a bit more balanced, making it feel a lot more like the vanilla super shotgun mechanically, but still giving it that sense of power you'd expect from the Brutal Doom mod. The new shotgun type is the AA-12, which is a faster firing shotgun with a 20 shell drum magazine. Now this is probably my favourite new gun, simply because of how quickly it fires and how utterly devastating it can be at close quarters. It doesn't do as much damage as the super shotgun, or I don't think even as much as the basic shotgun, which I think is done to kind of balance out the firing rate, but it is great fun to use and makes you nigh unstoppable at close range until you have to reload. On the fourth weapon slot there's the assault rifle and the chain gun, but now there's also a new machine gun which looks like it's based off some kind of LMG. Again it looks and sounds cool, but it doesn't really do all that much more damage than the minigun and about the only difference between it is the spread when firing, and the inclusion of a grenade launcher as an alternate fire which uses your rocket launcher ammunition. I'd still prefer the minigun over this thing though, simply because it can't match the minigun's firing rate and also the secondary fire rocket launcher mode is a little bit clunky because it has to reload between each shot. Speaking of rocket launchers, there's also the grenade launcher, expectedly sharing the same weapon slot and functioning mostly the same, just with the projectile dropping off over a longer distance in a reload time after every shot, which I think makes it a lot less useful than the rocket launcher on the whole. It also seems to do less damage than the rocket launcher. Testing it against the arachnotrons, for instance, it would take two or three rockets to kill them, but three or four with the grenade launcher. I think this is probably the weakest new gun in the lineup and something I didn't even really find myself using, and also the sprite work for it is kinda crappy. And then you get your hands on the railgun and all is forgiven. The railgun, as it always has been and always should be, is a devastating one-shot, one-kill weapon with a slow firing rate that rewards good aim and patience. The railgun in V21 is a goddamn juggernaut, able to kill most basic enemies in a single hit, even cacodemons and hell knights. Railguns have always been a personal favourite of mine whenever they popped up in FPS games, and this thing is no exception. It's got a zoom function as an alternate fire mode, which you don't really need to use, mostly because enemies are never really that far away that you need to use it, at least in Doom 1 or 2 anyway. But holy shit is this thing fun to use, and firing off a shot and seeing an enemy just jibbed instantly is extremely satisfying. I mean, it's almost cathartic. This thing shares its ammunition with the plasma rifle, as well as the BFG and the new BFG 10,000, which is just a slightly weaker but rapid firing version of the BFG 9000 with a hell of a lot more recoil. And then there's the return of the Mancubus flamethrower, the Revenant's missile launcher, and a couple of other hidden weapons as well, like an MP40 that's found only in the Wolfenstein 3D secret level of Doom 2. Other additions to V21 are more about gameplay and don't have as much of an impact on things overall, like the inclusion of a flashlight which can be used to marginally help you see a little bit better in darker areas. But considering Doom has never really put you into pitch black areas anyway, this thing is kind of redundant at times. 
If you've got a Berserker power-up, you can pick up smaller enemies like the Imps or Zombie Marines and throw them around for an instant kill. Similar to how you could pick up the enemy soldiers in Crisis if you had the strength function enabled on the nano suit. And again, look, it's a neat idea, but once you've done it a couple of times just to see what it looks like, you'll probably never do it again. Also, like I said before, because melee combat is often just complete suicide because of the increased damage and the attack speed that enemies get from the way the mod has completely reworked their behavior. Certain levels in both Doom 1 and Doom 2 have had some reworkings with textures and other props to make them look a bit more believable. In certain Doom 2 maps, like Factory and Downtown for instance, there's a bit of sprite work added in for props to make it look more like an actual place. So you've got smashed up cars, street signs, drivable vehicles and bits of debris scattered around, not to mention an improved skybox texture as well. Like I said though, they're not huge changes that affect things on a grand scale, more just so little things here and there that most Doom fans will notice and hopefully appreciate. Brutal Doom's always been about the little details as much as it has the grand picture, and that's what I think makes it so much fun to play. From things like the inclusion of the play leaving bloody footprints, or the way that water or acid pools ripple now when you walk through them. Enemies that aren't quite dead will be hobbling around with their legs or torso missing, and all the very unique death animations depending on which body part you're shooting shows off a tremendous sense of polish. You can even see the link belts when firing the minigun and machine gun if you look closely. It's just this incredible attention to detail and this immense sense of polish across almost every little visual and gameplay aspect. And it just keeps getting better and better with every new installment. You can even play as a female marine now if that's your cup of tea. And if any of this stuff is just sounding like hot liquid shit, well, you can always scale back the features to your liking. Or if you're really jaded, well, you don't have to play it. It's not like anyone's got a super shotgun to your head anyway. My main problems with Brutal Doom stem from the issues I've really always had with it from day one, and that's just how it can often affect the way the base game plays. I mean, a lot of the vanilla areas are super unbalanced because of the higher damage output of enemies like the Lost Souls and Zombie Marines. Levels in Doom 2 like Barrels of Fun for instance is insanely tough now because of how big the blast radius is for barrels. I'm really not fond of the irritating leap attacks that enemies can do as well, which I think can be done from too far a distance from the player making it a little bit unfair, and likewise the attack speed increase for the Lost Souls makes them even more irritating. It seems every version of Brutal Doom that comes out, I hate the Lost Souls more and more, and about the last thing that needs to be done is make them more dangerous. Considering that you can pretty much play through Doom 1 and Doom 2 without any huge hiccups though, these are really minor issues. But it's about the only objective thing I think I can complain about. I mean, everything else is subjective or just incidental and hardly earth shattering. What I think's great about Brutal Doom is the way that it always manages to breathe new life into the original game. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with the original, but I've played that thing to absolute death. And I think in a way that people like me are the ones who can benefit the most from a mod like Brutal Doom because we're able to appreciate the little changes and compare a lot of the mechanics to the way it was originally. My favourite moments in this mod are those times when you've rescued a couple of the other captured marines and then you all just go on these rip and tear tirades. Turning entire rooms of bad guys into puddles of blood and body parts. Seeing one of your AI buddies doing one of the melee executions is also hilarious to watch. Every new version of Brutal Doom just keeps adding little things here and there, and whilst it still retains enough of what made Doom so good, it would be easy for it to tip its scales in the other direction and just lose its way. I've noticed that a lot of the hatred around Brutal Doom is more to do with the modding community than the mod itself, and if you're not caught up in all that bullshit, which you shouldn't be, then Brutal Doom is definitely worth checking out. I don't know what Sergeant Mark is going to be changing between the beta and the final version, but even in this current form, ripping and tearing has never been this much fun.